Once upon a time, I said that college football teams should be scrimmaging against other teams in the spring. I believe, actually, Chris and I both said that on our old SBR college football show a couple of years ago. Uh, but we were talking about in-state matchups between bigger FBS programs and FCS programs. Like, over, over the last couple of years, uh, that's something that's been echoed throughout multiple college football circles. There have been just a ton of articles about it, etc. And now, Auburn coach Hugh Freeze, which, by the way, that is still weird to say. I'm still not used to that. Uh, but Hugh Freeze has bought into this. He stated at his most recent spring press conference, uh, allow us to scrimmage somebody on A-Day, another team. I think everybody would get out of it exactly what they want. Let's have Alabama play Troy, and we play UAB or vice versa. I don't care, he said. Uh, we'll play Alabama State. People will come see that. Now, Freeze suggested donating the proceeds to charity, foster care, orphan care, any good cause. Uh, the selling point is pretty simple. It's a game against another opponent, in a time when there's not a lot going on, and it's far enough away from the end of the college football season that anticipation has started building towards the next season. My initial, uh, excuse me, my initial idea for it uh, had to do with replacing FCS and small G5 games on the actual regular season schedule, like doing away with the SEC November FCS challenge and, and basically moving those to the spring. That way, those schools still get the money from you know the paycheck games but we don't have to see them in the middle of conference season. Now, that, that's just from a fan perspective. I'm sure that Nick Saban and Hugh Freeze, et cetera, would prefer to have a breather of a game to rest some starters before the Iron Bowl or to get an extra week to let some players heal up before an SEC championship game. Uh, but truth be told, like other conferences do not do this. And it's going to be harder to justify it when the SEC moves to nine games, uh, as we all assume that they'll do. And that's nine conference games, by the way. Uh, but these would still be scrimmages. And you could put some rules in where both schools uh, need to pull starters after, you know, the first quarter or at halftime, et cetera. There's ways to make it work. And I'm sure some coaches would love to see how the team responds in a real game situation. Uh, Andy Staples has an article over at The Athletic about the case for a true scrimmage between two teams. Uh, and this portion of that article sums, you know, a lot of the pros up. In this case... Uh, the idea that helps college football advance as an entertainment product also is the idea that would help coaches achieve some of their developmental goals while also providing a way for the schools making the most money to help the schools making the least. Uh, TV networks do not want LSU Southern in the fall. Fans would rather see the Tigers play a Big 12 team or a Pac-12 team in that spot. The SEC uh, is about to make LSU play another conference game, uh, taking away one of the four non-conference slots. But there are some issues with it as well, okay? Now, this, these are back to my thoughts. First off, there is a second transfer portal window that opens up after the spring. Like, everybody has seen NFL teams scrimmage each other before the preseason begins, and there's a fight that breaks out nearly every season. And the reason for some of those fights it is almost always based on some players going harder than others in those practices. So let's say that we do get Auburn versus Troy. Like, how, how much harder... Well, some of those Troy's, you know, excuse me, some of those Troy players play if if maybe they're attempting to impress Auburn coaches that, you know, might be looking for some transfer help, right? Say you've got a good cornerback at Troy and, yeah, your, your room's a little thin, uh, but you've got a guy that uh, is really wanting to show out. How hard is he going to go after those Auburn wide receivers, right? Like this is supposed to be a scrimmage. Uh, how, do you, how do you regulate that? Now, the second issue uh, would be more with, you know, I guess more snaps, right, for players who, you know, starting in 2024 are going to be asked to play more college football games than any teams have ever been asked to play before. Like, with a 12-team playoff coming in, you've got a possibility of teams playing 17 games in a season. Now, 17 is not likely, uh, but we are going to see some play 16. Like, it was not that long ago that we just bumped up to 15 games, and now we're talking about adding on another one for what is effectively unpaid labor. Uh, third, coaches already don't like the possibility to showing their playbook publicly before the season. Like, you're not going to get real stuff out of these games. They're called scrimmages for a reason. Anything that goes on in this game is going to be uber vanilla. And then finally, this. Like, where will the expectations be set? How many big-time teams are going to be willing to actually go out and practice on ESPN against teams that they should be much better than? Like, are Alabama fans going to be able to understand the idea of a scrimmage if UAB jumps up 17-3 to in the first half? 
Like, look at this. What if Texas State beats Texas A&M at Kyle Field in April? Like, does the administration look at that as, you know, the decline of the program? Like, what will the national expectations be from these practice games? And you can go through just a ton of let, let's say, Let's say Sam Pittman is coming into a season on the hot seat and Central Arkansas wins a spring scrimmage in Fayetteville on national television. Like, would Arkansas fire their coach in late April? It's, it's insane what could end up coming out of this. We saw what happened with the early uh, national recruiting day or national signing day. I mean, it, it sped up the hiring process like crazy. In college basketball, we see big brand schools lose exhibitions all the time. And fan bases freak out. Like Memphis lost to Christian Brothers one season. Syracuse lost to a D2 school. It adds pressure prematurely for these teams. Uh, teams that run the triple like, are, are assuredly going to get cut out of this. They're not going to be able to go and collect these checks. G5 upstarts, probably not going to be able to get those games either. Like If you're, if you're Alabama, uh, do you want to scrimmage against Troy? Like Do you want to take the risk that Troy, who's coming off of a 12-win season, uh, could come into your house and beat you in the spring scrimmage? Like, if you're Nick Saban, yeah, you're probably okay with losing in the spring, right? Like, and it, this whole thing is an interesting idea. It would be great for fans, great for TV networks that would love to have, you know, some different content in the spring. And for some coaches, a really great way to help develop their young players. But let's not forget about the drawbacks. Like, honestly, one of the best options might be to have conference scrimmages, like do it home and away against teams that are not going to be on the schedule in the fall. Like, you, it gives the ops team the new players, et cetera, a run-through on what happens on game day, both at home and away. I I'm willing to bet the NCAA would have to approve like more spring practices than just 15 in order to make that work. Uh, who knows what they'll end up doing, but I do guarantee that networks and conferences are already looking at this as an untapped potential market. Uh, we'll, we'll see what ends up happening, but it was definitely interesting that you know Hugh Freeze brought this up and gave us something to talk about uh, during the springtime. Right, Auburn's eight-day game, by the way, is this weekend. It is this Saturday. So, tune in SEC Network Plus, uh, ESPN Plus, all that good stuff. Psst. Hey, if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and of course, jump in the comments.